What is the explanation for these mysterious events which are unfolding in the world today? And therefore, what is the explanation of the Arab uprising? They call it the Arab Spring, in which we have had the events of Tunisia and the departure of the President uh, Zainuddin bin Ali with that uprising, popular uprising. And then, what's his name now? We've forgotten it, eh? the Egyptian one. <laughs> Hosni Mubarak in the popular Egyptian uprising and now we see uprisings taking place in other parts of the Arab world as well what is going on? what is the explanation? our perspective is to look at the subject from the Quran and from the ahadith of Prophet Muhammad and when we do that the first thing that we recognize is we're, de we're dealing with the subject of akhir zaman or Islamic eschatology maybe tomorrow the scholars of Islam are going to wake up and turn to this subject but as of today nothing has succeeded so far they don't want to touch the subject why? I thought perhaps it's because of methodology methodology an incapacity of turning to the Quran to locate that explanation because of defective methodology and so now let us spend a few moments on methodology because we are growing old and tomorrow is our younger ones, the students, who are going to take over. And we want to leave with them this methodology that they can take the subject further. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches methodology at the very beginning. I'm going to be rapid now because you probably heard my previous lectures. He ordered Adam alayhi salam to bow down. Sorry, he ordered the angels to bow down, make sijda before Adam alayhi salam. And then Allah says, For sajadu illa iblis. And they all prostrated except iblis. If we use the wrong methodology, the wrong one, they will, we will study this verse in isolation. And we will come to the conclusion that since the order was given to the angels and they all bow down except this one, the implication is that Iblis is an angel. The Christians came to that same conclusion. And so they gave us the concept of a fallen angel. But in Islam, angels don't fall down. No. If we use this wrong methodology of taking a verse of the Quran or taking a hadith in isolation, you know, the lazy man's methodology, we can make a very embarrassing mistake. And Allah teaches us the lesson at the very beginning of the Quran because He's not deficient in the use of language. No. He says, For such I do. Illa Iblis They all prostrated Except Iblis he's, he's used this language to teach Methodology Usul tafsir If we use the correct methodology In which we look to the totality of the Quran Not just one verse or one hadith as we study the Quran, we find that, but wait a minute. Angels do not have free will. Angels do not have the capacity to choose. No. When an angel is given an order, he has no choice but to obey. وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ says Allah in the Quran they do what they are ordered to do 
But this one disobeyed. <laughs> and so he couldn't be an angel. And there are other verses of the Quran which as we study them we realize oh oh we made a mistake. And so when we study the totality of the guidance then we get the correct understanding. When we go to Surah al kafi of the Quran you say kafi, we say Surah al kaf Allah says wa kana min al jinn and so when you study Islamic eschatology when you study ilmu akhiru zaman you got homework to do it's not going to be easy you have to stay with your subject for a long long time you have to plant before you can reap before you can grasp this most difficult of all subjects located in the Quran Ilmu Akhiru Zaman You have to locate what is the central theme around which everything else revolves and hold on to that and never part from it that central theme of course is Wa innahu it can be read as La ilmu lisa'a or al adamun lisa'a both are correct that he Nabi Isa alayhi salam when he returns his return will be the sign of all signs of the last hour so everything connected with the subject of ilmu akhiru zaman revolves around the central theme of the return of the true Messiah but Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam told us that before the true Messiah returns Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will release into the world a false Messiah al Masihud Dajjal and when we study the subject of al Masihud Dajjal and we also study the subject of Ya'juj and Ma'juj or Gog and Magog now we get the explanation the Quran now begins to explain to us 